care of the hard part. Let's get it on. I want to be the best that ever was. To beat all the rest. Yeah. Right into the vat. Then he laughed and scampered down the ladder before he got caught. Stephanie looked down, and as the greener dissolved into her grape juice, a single tear rolled down her cheek. It's a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. And Stephanie, she got over it. And you know, the funny thing is, from that day on, she's never, ever touched another glass of grape juice again in her life. <laughs> This is the typical bland Canadian week, and this is the day that changes it all. Turkey Tuesdays! Here's how it works. Every Tuesday, you serve a delectable turkey dish. Not the whole turkey. You use turkey parts from your supermarket. Turkey's low on fat and high on taste. They'll eat it up. Turkey stir-fry, mmm, turkey tacos, turkey scallopini, or burgers. Mom, has there ever been a week with seven Tuesdays? Turkey Tuesdays. The week just got tastier. There's no such thing as too much strength. Secret antiperspirant. Secret works for a woman. And it's pH balanced for our unique chemistry. Solid, multi-dimensional power. Its strength bonds with yours. Secret. Strong enough for a man, made for a woman. Hi, here in beautiful downtown Miami to find out what people think about New Perk Plus. I'm going to wash your hair right now if you'd like. No. To. Oh, come on. No. Yeah. Can you can you shampoo my hair right here? Ironically enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, Perk Plus has been reformulated. And it has water-based conditioning. Perk Plus leaves no heavy buildup, so you'll feel your hair is clean. It feels great. It feels great. It feels okay. great. It's light. It's so soft. It's wonderful. New Perk Plus with clean conditioning. If we can wash your hair, we can change your mind. Excuse me. Excuse me. It doesn't matter what comes, fresh goes better in life, with mental expression full of life. Nothing gets to you, staying fresh, staying cool, with mental expression full of life. Fresh goes better, mental expression. Fresh goes better with mental expression full of life. Mentos, the fresh maker. Now, let's see. What will we teach you first? How about how to spell? I already know that. Oh? Sure. Oh, this spell is to turn you into a frog. Hugga, maga, maga, hugga. Don't spit on me. Well, if you're going to be a frog, you'll need moisture. Do I look like a frog? While the embers of his feeble brain rapidly turn to ashes, here is a story about a story. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine, an English professor whose heart was in the right place. He watched one student, Dave, practically salivate over this girl, Zoe, who sat in front of him. And Zoe, the professor thought, was kind of sweet on Dave. Well, it was spring, and the professor was feeling romantic. He teamed up Dave and Zoe to write a tandem story. One would start writing and stop when the egg timer ran out, and then the other would pick up where the first left off until time is up. Okay? Computer fired up. Time. Dave went first. He figured the way to Zoe's heart was the way to any girl's heart, romance. So he started to write. Carrie was confused. Was it eyes open and mouth closed, or mouth open and eyes closed? It was the most romantic moment of her young life. Her first meaningful kiss, and she didn't want to get it wrong. Time. Now, Zoe figured Dave is a guy. So to impress him, she'll go with a kind of story all guys like. Scary and gory. So he ripped off his enemy's arm. The blood dripped on Laszlo's shoe. But so what? He'd lick it off later. Right now, he was interested in the flesh he was holding in his hand. Time. This is what she'd been waiting for. Being there, alone on the 
dock with her, Dan. He smiled at her and looked up into the glittering sky. Oh, there must have been a million stars. And when a shooting star streaked across the diamonds over their heads, he thought, time. He was hungry for a snack before he delivered the brain of the evil doctor. He nibbled on a finger, spitting out the cheap grass ring. And Laszlo looked down into the grave, and an arm reached out. Time. And tenderly wrapped around Carrie's soft shoulder, her heart pounded. He wants me to be his girlfriend. And when he said he never felt this way before, Carrie melted into his arms. Time. And smothered the life out of the body. At first, the eyes bulged wildly. But as the last breath left the corpse and the last drop of blood ran out, the whole body drew rigid. At that moment, Laszlo knew he would need fresh human organs to regenerate his monster. Time. And make her the happiest girl in the world. Oh, Carrie's heart raced with excitement. The thought of being with this man who she loved so dearly was exhilarating. Her eyes sparkled, her face flushed. Time. The professor glanced over their shoulders. Were they out of their minds? He had to call time and stop them. But at that very moment, the dean summoned him to his office. So Zoe went on. With the infusion of the synthetic serum, the monster's grotesque body twitched. Its green eyes oozed the excess fluid. Its mouth foamed as it rose on its haunches. All six hairy legs. He loved every fiber of Carrie's being. And right there, under the stars, he kissed her and promised to be with her forever. Nothing he said. Would ever force the monster to turn on him. But it did. In one swift move, the jaws of the beast severed Laszlo's head. Dave looked up from the computer and shouted, You're sick, Zoe. Sick. Your mind is warped. Your sappy story would make a sugar plum fairy hurl. You have a twisted mind. You're swimming in honey and maple syrup. Your brain is a mangled mess. You should write for the pink feather quill. Will you go out with me? I'd love to. And they leaped into each other's arms. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine, an English professor who gave up his teaching job to run a very profitable dating service. Citizenship? Canadian. Proof. Roll up the rim to win. Thank you, sir. Drive through. Yes, it's time to roll up the rim to win. Like these winners of the GMC Jimmy 4x4s. And there's still millions of prizes to be won, including thousands of Panasonic TVs at Tim Hortons. Proof. R r rim up the roll to win. Pull over there, sir. No, wait, wait, r r rolling winning roll. The First Nations were here before us. Yeah says that this mountain was climbed during the construction of the... A train. Oh, and to open up the Great White North, this mountain was used as a landmark for... Airplanes! This millennium, we have seen countless stories take shape, presenting the 1999 Millennium Souvenir Set from the Royal Canadian Mint, an unforgettable gift. Look, a sheep. A sheep? Good one, Dad. Hey! Now Sprint Canada offers one low rate, night and day. And unlimited internet access. Together? This is news. Sprint Canada introduces long distance and internet savings together. One great package. Now call anytime, night and day to anywhere in Canada. And surf the internet for as long as you want. Let me see that. Call any day, any night to anywhere in Canada for just 10 cents a minute home or business calls. And you know what the other guys charge during the day. You'll also get unlimited internet access, so you can call when you want and surf all you want, both for $24.95 a month. We can surf round the clock. We'll need more coffee. It's simple. Call more, surf more, save more. Call Sprint Canada today at 1-800-810-MOST. Both on one bill, too. Your treat. Let's try a different subject. How about math? 
First thing, count. How do you do? Take off your scarf, my dear. What a lovely neck you have. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> Not that kind of count. Count, count. One, two, three, four. Who the heck are we rooting for? Five, six, seven, eight. What the heck comes after eight? That's it. School's over. Get out of here. But, but, but I didn't learn anything. Oh, I did. I learned that you can't teach anyone who's got no brains at all. If you can't teach me, it's you who's a failure. Wait a minute. See? You're all talk. Big mouth, lot of noise. Yada, yada, yada. Hey, I can teach you. I, I will teach you. <sighs> I hate maggots. Hmm. This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. His name's Norman, but he called himself Slick. But he wasn't really. You see, Slick is the wussiest wuss in the freshman class at Hardy U. But almost from birth, Slick was brainwashed with spring break movies, having watched Animal House 72 times. So when Slick graduated from high school, Hardy Hardy was all he wanted. He joined the fraternity with the wildest rep. BGX. Beta Gimme Chicks. <laughs> Even thought the pledge hazing was cool, the highlight of which was the panty raid. Slick yeah. and three other dweeb pledges got decked out in commando gear and set out for the sorority house with the hottest babes. The four salivating incompetents scaled the ivy-covered walls and there was a gaggle of sisters in one room doing toenails and hairdos. The pledges gaped through the window. Wow, girls in pajamas! Slick spotted an empty room. The window wasn't locked. Slick slipped in and headed for the dresser. But then he heard, Gotta get some sleep before that psych quiz. And Slick dove under the bed. Just as Jody came into her room, Slick didn't move. He'd have to wait till Jody fell asleep before he could grab a pair of panties. But it would take an awful lot of patience because Jody was a super A-plus student. And even though she had the psych book memorized, she decided to pull an all-nighter. Jody stayed awake and studied. Slick stayed under the bed and was dying. It must have been the corn dogs he ate, or the tortilla chips, or the super salty pretzels, whatever. It was making Slick pretty thirsty. But Jody would have to get up sometime to go to the bathroom. Gorgeous as she was, she was still human. Oh yeah? By 4 a.m., Slick thought the inside of his mouth was lined with sandpaper. He had totally run out of spit. He needed water. He'd have to roll out and surrender. His dream lost for the need of a bit of water. How tragic. Fortunately, Slick was not as nerdy as he looked. Nobody could be that nerdy. Slick remembered when he was peeping into Jody's room, there was a glass of water on her night table. While she was absorbed in her books, ever so slowly, Slick's hand slid up the side of Jody's bed. Jody reached for a pencil, almost touching Slick's hand. The pencil rolled off the table, and when Jody reached down, Slick put the pencil into her hand. Jody was so into studying, she never noticed. So Slick made another try for the water. And he got it, slow and easy. He took the glass down and had himself one big gulp. Oh, it's times like this that one tells God he will never participate in a panty raid. Unless, of course, he gets away with this one. By morning, Slick was still under the bed. And Jody was still memorizing every word of every psych book ever written. Finally, Jody packed it in. She swung her feet over the side of the bed and she screamed. The other girls rushed in. My contacts, Jody said. I put them in this glass of cleansing fluid on the night table, and they're gone! This is a true story. Oh, yeah. Happened to a friend of a friend of mine, Norman. And since that all-nighter, he can really watch his diet, since his stomach is now wearing contacts. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>
Once again, the Subaru Forester has outperformed the competition, earning the highest overall rating of vehicles tested in its class in a recent crash test. But the real beauty of the Forester is that it can help you avoid accidents altogether by automatically transferring power from the wheels that slip to the wheels that grip for maximum control. Another reason why the competition is a little bent out of shape. Subaru Forester, the beauty of all-wheel drive. trapeze I feel like I wear pound more in makeup it's not ordinary makeup it completely blocks your pores mm. it's real wear and tear on your skin dove well dove saved my skin it feels soft and clean I've done the comparison I've used cosmeticians products and they didn't do any more for me I spent four years at circus school there isn't a woman on earth who wears makeup like this every day Sorry, gang. This couldn't wait. Gotta tell you about new Sugar Crisp cereal. They cranked up the taste. Sugar Bear! Gotta go. Now, as I was saying, Sugar Crisp tastes better than ever. Uh-oh. Better go find me some more. Can't get enough of new Sugar Crisp. Mm -hmm. Julie Pete sold separately. Okay, the subject is geography. Geop what? Do you know what this is? Uh, ha, okay, what is it? Uh, I don't know. <sighs> it's a globe. A globe? Yeah, it's a map of the world, the, the earth, earth, the earth. planet we live on. Live on? Yeah. How come I don't fall off? Because you wallow in disgusting, gooey, sticky stuff. Lucky me, huh? Yeah, well, now, listen. Do you know anything about geography? Ah, uh, huh? Okay, where is, uh... Oh, let's see. New York City. In the north northeast United States, 180 miles southwest of Bridgeport, Connecticut, 26 miles east of Newark, New Jersey, latitude 41 degrees north, longitude 72 degrees. What? Uh... <sighs> just came out. Prince Albert in... Saskatchewan, north northeast of Saskatoon, on Capella River, south of Waskasio Lake. Maurice, you are a, a geography savant. What did you call me? Savant. Uh, uh, geography savant. It, it, it means you know everything there is to know about geography. But about everything else, you're a complete brainless idiot. Yep, that's me, all right. <laughs> this is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. Wayne had a problem. He was flunking biology, and he really needed this credit to graduate. It was fraud dissection day, the one science thing that he was good at. Everything was going real good until near the end of class when Wayne took the frog that he was dissecting and stuck it on his thumb like a puppet. Then he turned to Henrietta, the girl at the next lab station. He didn't really like her, but he was crazy about Marianne, her lab partner. Marianne was on the swim team, and she was very pretty. He tapped Henry at his shoulder. When she turned around, he stuck his frog thumb puppet right into her face. She screamed so loud that her retainer flew out of her mouth and right into the hole in the frog that she and Marianne were dissecting. Henrietta kept screaming. Everyone was looking at them. This wasn't working out so well. The teacher made him stay after class and clean up. He had to scrape each of the carved up frogs out of the dissecting trays and into a rusty old bucket. Guts and all. Then he had to take the bucket to the custodian's office and dump it into a big bin. So he was in the hall near the custodian's office when he saw this big metal bin sitting on a trolley cart in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Wayne figured that this must be the place where he was supposed to dump the frog guts. He lifted the lid and poured the stuff into the bin. Then he went to his next class. 
A couple of hours later, the bell rang. It was lunchtime, which was a good thing because Wayne was hungry. He went to the cafeteria wondering what the special of the day would be. It was a choice between the French fries with gravy and the meatloaf and mashed potatoes with gravy. Mm. Very popular item, gravy. So when he got to the calf, something was going on. The swim team was having a fundraiser to raise money so they could go to the regional finals. Mm. A chili sale. Cool. Wayne liked chili. It came with nachos. Mary Ann from Wayne's biology class was scooping the chili into bowls and handing it out to people. She waved him up to the front of the line. Hi, said Mary Ann. Wayne said hi back. She asked him if he wanted some chili. He said, sure. She scooped an extra big gob of chili into his bowl and handed it to him. That was really funny what you did in class today, said Mary Ann. She gave him some nachos too. Yeah, said Wayne. He was getting the feeling that maybe she kind of liked him. She asked if she could eat with him, and he said, sure. That's when Wayne realized that something was kind of familiar. He said, I'll be right back. He ran to the custodian's office as fast as he could, but the big metal bin and trolley were gone. He went back to the cafeteria where Marianne was waiting, but she hadn't waited for him. She was just about finished eating her bowl of chili. Wayne sat down and he made his most serious face. Marianne was smiling at him. Wayne had a problem. He could fess up and admit that he dumped a big rusty bucket full of frog guts into the swim team's fundraising chili and Marianne would hate him forever. And he'd get kicked out of school and not graduate. And the swim team would pound the living snot out of him. Or he could keep his mouth shut. No one would know the difference and everything would be fine. So Marianne said, try the chili. It's really good. And she smiled at him. Hey, it's a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. And Wayne, he's no fool. He ate the chili. And you know what? It wasn't bad. Kind of tasted like chicken. I can't go on. My head's tired. My belly's empty. Listen. The customer on table four had stepped on a glob of waffle. <laughs> and the who can resist squooshed waffle? <laughs> oh, hey, Maurice, table four is in the west side of the diner. I know east from west. I'm a geography genius, right? But, but that way's west, and that way, that way's the... <laughs> Edge of the counter. Maurice. Maurice, where are you? I'm down under. Oh, he's still playing the geography game. <laughs> hey, Maurice, could you be in Australia? I'm in heaven. How can you be in heaven if you're down under? <laughs> I'm down under weak old chicken gizzards. Mm. Heaven. You gotta love this lob. Pinky owns a brain, but to recruit your help in their diabolical scheme to... Try to take over the world. Clyde just sent forth a zillion dollars to I Wanna Rule the World with Pinky owns a brain. Watch Pinky owns a brain, weeknights at 5.30. Pinky, where? Mm -hmm. oh, The spitting competitions are underway to determine the new host of Freaky Stories, Cockroach or Maggot. Find out Tuesday, April 27th on YTV.